want them to be familiar with their group members, identify the strengths and weaknesses of each of the group members, and really use that to kind of build on them on themselves as they go along. And like I said, it really follows this um, systematic approach from through from food chemistry all the way through food analysis. And the idea is that we just keep building, we keep incorporating the concepts that are learned in lecture with the techniques they are, they're learning from some of the basic um, laboratories and being able to put that together and actually write a protocol um, for them for themselves or actually for me to look at it. So as I said, the groups are selected. This is the general assignment we did this year. Uh, the groups are selected in Food Chemistry 1 and um, I really, like I said, I let them really choose their own, their own groups. And the assignment is that you know, they are going to write a protocol. I can go in and as Ingolf said, we can hand them a protocol and they can follow it. But sometimes they complain like, oh, this doesn't work or this data sheet doesn't work with it or these questions are stupid. And I said, you know what? I want you to write your own because writing a sound lab protocol is not as easy as you think. And I pull from several different lab manuals. I don't have one assigned lab manual that I look at and kind of a, and have adapted my own experiments in the past. And I said, you know, I want you guys to do this. I want you to have a year-long project, and we're going to build on it every quarter with the principles that you learn. So what I told them is a lab protocol has to have an objective, an introduction, materials and methods, any kind of data tables you might want to present um, for students to take notes in. Uh, write up laboratory questions and actually come up with answers to some of those questions. So that was their task, really to act as an instructor of sorts in their group and, provide, and write up a protocol. So the concepts um, are unique to each quarter. Now in Food Chemistry 1, um, the idea is that they kind of learn what I call the basics. Applications, functional properties, etc. And in food chemistry too, we focus more on the physical properties and interactions. Um, we, in, we bring in now ideas of um, how reactions in food can affect color and texture and kind of those quality indicators. And then food analysis looks at compositional or obviously instrumental analysis and how, we, how a simple, what would seem a simple analysis or looking at functional properties, we can actually 